Today's project, door bucks and window bucks. Behind me, you can see I've already built a door buck. Just off camera over there, I built another door buck and another one over there. And this will be the same for window bucks. I found there are three common ways to build these. One is, let's say that this is the edge of the wall, right? The door is going to go here, between here and the next ICF block. There's going to be a door here. So this is the edge, and you want to put a door buck right here. What a door buck is, is the wood or the material that you're going to attach your door frame to and it stays permanently inside your house. The three ways that I've seen it done. One is you take a piece that fits exactly in between the foam and you slip it in here. Then you have excellent resistance to thermal bridging which is when you lose heat through wood mostly in a home. This way you're covered on this side and this side thermally so you're not losing any heat. The reason I don't prefer that uh, technique is because in order to attach my trim to that piece of wood in between the foam, I would need extra long fasteners. I don't know why that bothers me, to be honest. I like to attach trim and, and anything else to the, the meat of, of the wood. Another common way to do it would be to span this whole length and just put a piece of wood all the way across on the outside. The reason I don't like that, then you've created a thermal bridge, which kind of nullifies using ICF generally speaking. What I've opted for is the third way. This is a good example little piece here because it is a cut off of one of the door bucks I've already built. And you can see this, this edge is higher than this edge and it'll sit like that. But I'm gonna lay it on its side so you can see exactly what I'm doing here. Instead of putting your, your piece of wood in between or over the very top, you kind of get the half of the best of both worlds. So again, this is sitting on its side, but this is just so you can see it. Here's my door buck. Of course, this will be as long as a door. And now I can set it in like that. Now there's a thermal break, which avoids thermal bridging on this side, but I have meat to attach my trim and other things to on this side. So this distance here is 10 and a half inches exactly. I had to get two by 12 pieces of wood. And so I had to rip all these down. We've opted for three foot wide and also six foot, let's see, six foot, eight inch tall doors, which comes up to 36 inches by 80 inches. And if you look at any any door, let's say you go to a big box store or maybe uh, uh, your local door seller, <laughs> on the package usually it will have the rough opening dimensions. So the ones we're going to buy, the rough opening dimensions are 38 and a quarter inches wide and 82 and an eighth inches tall. One other thing, factory purchased boards from big box stores or even lumber yards don't often have perfectly square edges. I always cut off about an inch because even my little handsaw in conjunction with this speed square usually makes a more square edge than you get from the factory. So I'm going to make this once again, 38 and a quarter inches across. However, this thing has to sit on top of the two uprights and each of those are an inch and a half thick together. That means three inches. And I have to add three inches to that 38 and a quarter. I don't have to eat that extra three inches or inch and a half on anything. So this is exactly 82 and an eighth. Check your door manufacturer though, because each one might have a different um, rough opening. I don't know. I'm not a door guy. I have one good solid upright. This is not treated wood. I can't just let the concrete flood right up to it and soak in all the water. It will warp. What's recommended is to put this stuff on it. This is sill sealer. This is what you would use if I wasn't using ICFs and I was framing walls on the outside of my house. This would lay on the concrete and then my framed wall would go on top of this. So they're having me use this on the wood so that we can pour concrete up to it. But I'm gonna go a step further, acoustic caulk on the wood, then they'll bed this in there. It's kind of overkill, but it does keep the bugs out. And I haven't seen it done in this application, but I'm doing it. So now take hammer and nails, and that's it. You do that as random and uneven, different angles. You don't go in all the way. Part of the point of it is to not go in all the way. And the more weird angles, the better. Since concrete is being poured up to the edge of this, what I'm giving the concrete is something to latch onto, and it's gonna flood around the heads of these nails. It's gonna hold this door in place, or at least that's the theory. Notice I left 
about a three inch strip void of nails right here because this two and a half inch piece is gonna set on there like that. And I don't want nails interfering with, with setting it in there. I made sure to plumb both of the uprights in two dimensions. One was on this plane and one was on this plane. I set the level across the top just to make sure that it was level and it is. These are what's holding it level this way and this diagonal is what's holding it level or plumb this way. Then we can see those nails protruding out and if you go down inside the block you can see there are more nails and that's what's gonna bite into the concrete. For the most part, we got them done. This will be a wider door installed into this wider door buck. What we do now, go to the home center, buy our windows and doors, slip those into the bucks, nail them off to the bucks, and enjoy your new door or window.